My name is Lauren Taus and I'm a psychedelic assisted therapist, educator, and activist. I'm the founder of Embodied Life and today we're going to talk about 2CB. 2CB is a novel psychoactive substance that was invented by biochemist and psychopharmacologist Alexander Shulgin in 1974. Shulgin is known as the godfather of ecstasy and legally synthesized over 200 psychedelic compounds in a musty lab on his property in the Bay Area known as The Farm. Serving as his own guinea pig, he tested all these compounds on himself. And if he found them to be safe and possibly useful, extended the invitation to his wife and Shulgin, as well as to their research group. These chemical tales are joyously recounted in the couple's co-authored books PCAL, Phenethylamines I Have Known and Loved, and TCAL, Tryptamines I Have Known and Loved. Tryptamines include the classic psychedelics like LSD or psilocybin. 2CB is a phenethylamine, a class of organic compounds that includes various psychoactive substances like amphetamines, MDMA, and mescaline. In fact, it was Shulgin's first psychedelic experience with mescaline in the 50s that inspired him to begin tinkering with its chemical structure, eventually leading him to invent a variety of new psychedelic compounds, thus bringing 2CB and the whole 2C family into existence. Shulgin considered 2CB to be one of his greatest inventions. It was one of the six psychedelic molecules among his magic half dozen, which he thought had the most potential, and five of which he invented himself. He's also claimed 2CB to be one of his all-time favorite psychedelics, which is significant for a scientist who's gone on around 10,000 psychedelic trips. It is, in my opinion, one of the most graceful, erotic, sensual, introspective compounds I have ever invented," he wrote in his Ask Dr. Shulgin column in 2003. For most people, it is a short-lived and comfortable psychedelic with neither toxic side effects nor next-day hangover. 2CB stayed largely underground at first, with Shulgin offering it to his friends and some trusted psychologists who used it with particular clients. According to a 1996 article by Anu, therapists found that 2CB could create a warm, empathetic bond between themselves and their patients. The article also speaks to the drug's ability to dissolve the patient's ego defenses and inner resistances, thus enabling the person to get in touch with suppressed emotions and repressed memories, thereby helping to resolve psychological problems. Eventually, a German pharmaceutical company called Dritwell began producing 2CB in 5 milligram pills and selling them as Nexus, a sexual enhancement drug that could alleviate impotence and frigidity. And when MDMA became illegal in the US in 1985, 2CB quickly rose to the occasion as a legal alternative. By the early 90s, Americans had become the world's largest consumer of Nexus often buying packs at sex and head shops and eating four or five pills, the equivalent of 20 to 25 milligrams for its psychedelic effects. By 1995, 2CB was criminalized and placed in Schedule I of the Controlled Substances Act, and the US successfully urged other countries to do the same. However, this Shulgin molecule is still quite popular, albeit hard to find. And many who've tried it, myself included, and spoke to me for this story reported that it's their favorite psychedelic. It's pretty awesome. But why? 2CB is often described as a cross between LSD and MDMA, although many people report that it's just the language they have to explain it with. And really, 2CB is its own unique experience. There's very different body feelings than mixing LSD and MDMA, says Joe Moore, co-founder and co-host of the podcast and media company Psychedelics Today. It has very different waves. Because it's a phenethylamine, it's more like mescaline. It's a really unique thing. 2CB completely fucking blew me over, Beretta tells me excitedly over the phone. It was so visual and so beautiful, but I felt grounded in a way that I don't when I'm that high on tryptamines or LSD. To get to have such an immersive, beautiful, visual experience on shrooms or LSD, you really have to take a lot. And to be in public on that much LSD, it's way too much. But I didn't feel that on 2CB. I felt grounded 
like I do with mescaline. But I also felt the relatedness to MDMA. I felt empathetic and a really deep connection with my musical partner who I was with. For that reason, 2CB is popular at music festivals. Folks can enjoy slight visuals while still remaining in contact with reality and experiencing a deep connection to the music and the people around them. However, many folks also report taking it at home with friends, partners, or alone, and having really beautiful experiences that were visual, empathetic, and euphoric. It's an enhancer for our senses and feelings. It amplifies sounds, visuals, and touch, and it doesn't feel too toxic nor stimulating, described Sam, who's taken 2CB nearly 50 times at doses between 10 and 35 milligrams. 2CB can be a very visually psychedelic experience, although visuals are unique to the individual and reportedly increase with dose. While some folks didn't experience any visuals, Many people who filled out a survey I created on 2CB reported both closed and open eye visuals, and many highlighted the intensity of the vibrant colors they saw. At doses in the 10 to 27 milligram range, Blake described their visuals as electric, and another participant, Adrian, said, it's like being caressed by a pink and green glow submerged underwater in the psychedelic sea with a surprising empathogen emphasis. Others, like Sam, described the open eye visuals as seeing additional lights drifting and morphing. However, not everyone experienced open eye visuals, but reported complex patterning when they closed their eyes and relaxed. CEV, closed eye visuals, were very reminiscent to LSD in a playful, whimsical manner with an emphasis on pink and green colors. Dose may play a large role in whether or not users experience visuals, and at higher doses, 20 to 30 milligrams and above, more than one of the survey participants described the open eye visuals as cartoonish, or as Raquel, who's taken 2CB around 10 times, and at doses in the 35 to 40 milligram range said, a bit like LSD meets Scooby-Doo. Similarly, Alex, who's taken 2CB 20 times at doses between 15 and 30 milligrams, said that high doses were almost like the world was a cartoon. Everything had a glowing outline, closest thing to what media depicts psychedelics to be like. On Reddit, many describe extremely geometrical open eye visuals on higher doses that can be too intense and extremely disorienting. Properly dosing a 2CB is crucial for having a safe and fun experience. And most folks stay in the 5 to 25 milligram range. The experience definitely changes with the dose with many people reporting manageable and pathogenic feelings at lower doses of 5 to 15 milligrams and more psychedelic and visual experiences at doses in the 15 to 25 milligram range and above. The threshold microdose range for 2CB is 2 to 7 milligrams. An effective dose, something like 5 to 15. Average psychedelic dose is 15 to 20 milligrams. And a high psychedelic dose, 20 to 30 milligrams. 2CB can come as a pill, tablet, or powder. And if you do receive a dosed pill, try and find out how many milligrams it contains. This is very important. If you receive 2CB as a powder, always, always weigh it out on an accurate scale before ingesting. Every milligram of 2CB can affect the experience. And so eyeballing a dose of powder could get you in way deeper than you bargained for which once happened to Beretta. He's had very positive experiences at doses in the 10 to 25 milligram range, but when he was first getting into psychedelics, he eyeballed some 2CB powder without a scale, took about twice what he was used to, he thinks it was in the 40 milligram range, and had a challenging trip. It was really gnarly, he said. You get this body load sensation. It's, it's almost like an electric buzzing. It was extremely unpleasant. Similarly, in Shulgin's book, Pikal, pleasant experiences are described in the 16 to 24 milligram range, but harrowing and more challenging trips were occasioned by higher doses, such as this trip report authored by someone who took a 64 milligram dose. And I quote, I was propelled into something not of my choosing. Everything that was alive was completely fearsome. I could look at a picture of a bush, and it was just that, a picture, and it posed no threat to me. Then my gaze moved to the right and caught a bush growing outside the window, and I was petrified. A life form I could not understand, and thus could not control. And I felt that my own life form was not a bit more controllable. Therefore, like with all psychedelics, 
it's best to take a low or moderate dose for your first experience. And if you find you want to go deeper, experiment with slightly higher doses in subsequent trips. The doses mentioned above were all ingested orally, which is the most popular way to take 2CB. Folks report either swallowing a pill, weighing out their dose and mixing it with water, or bombing their dose by putting it in a rolling paper or piece of toilet paper and swallowing it all like a pill. But nasal ingestion is also done, although many people warn that it is extremely painful, more so than with other substances. However, if you do choose to ingest nasally, doses should be significantly smaller because it comes on faster, stronger, and it will be shorter lasting. According to PCAL, 2CB lasts between four and eight hours. And that's pretty in line with what the 31 people who took the survey reported. Most said 2CB lasted between four and six hours, depending on the dose, with a notable come down somewhere between the three and six hour mark. Moore said that the experience lasted longer than he expected with the long come down. Beretta described the length as very similar to MDMA, lasting about six hours. The most common side effect people reported in the survey was nausea on the come up, which led to vomiting in a few cases where heavy foods like pizza or curry were ingested in close proximity to the 2CB. Like with other psychedelics, it's best to fast for three to four hours before consuming in order to avoid most of the nausea or chance of vomiting. Another common complaint is that the 2CB come up can be a bit anxious and itchy, and that the whole experience can be a bit tweaky or speedy, resembling an amphetamine. Some other folks reported trouble sleeping afterwards and a slight headache or fogginess the next day, which many felt was dose dependent. In fact, Leland Radovanovic, founder of Conscious Communications Collective, said that he feels an afterglow the day after a dose of 25 milligrams or below, and a hangover after doses greater than 25 milligrams. Hangover feels like being drained after a hard trip on LSD or psychedelic mushrooms, he said. Interestingly though, the most common report is that there is practically no next day come down or hangover, and that the whole experience is much more gentle than its cousins MDMA and LSD. LSD-like visuals, but without the head games that sometimes come with traditional psychedelics, is how Raquel described it. Plus, many say that they don't feel the serotonin dump or depressive come down that can follow an MDMA experience. Another interesting side effect or lack thereof is that many users also report being able to eat and sleep with ease after the experience, something they've struggled with after a night with MDMA or LSD. Plus, at low and moderate doses, many report still being able to perform sexually and really enjoy doing it, which is pretty famously hard on MDMA without the help of drugs like Viagra. While there are many anecdotal reports that 2CB has relatively few negative side effects, there is some speculation that it could be a reasonable choice or alternative to MDMA and psychedelic-assisted therapy. And although it was used by some therapists before it was outlawed in the mid-90s, the research into its safety and application is scant. In order to carry out clinical studies in humans, there must be preclinical safety data for it, and there is none, says David Nichols, pharmacologist and chemist, who's been studying psychoactive drugs since 1969 and founder of the Hefter Research Institute. He explains that Rick Doblin, founder of MAPS, the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies, the group that's been funding research into MDMA, supported preclinical toxicology studies for MDMA back in the late 1980s thus making today's MDMA clinical trials possible. But no one has funded the preclinical toxicology studies necessary to do clinical studies of 2CB in human subjects, explains Nichols. I have heard that such work might be in the works somewhere, but so far there is nothing. Is 2CB a good alternative to MDMA or psilocybin in psychedelic assisted therapy? He says that no one knows. He explains the pharmacology is different, that 2CB is actually closer to psilocybin than MDMA, but 2CB might be useful as an adjunct in psychotherapy in the way that MDMA is used. That's also an idea that Joe Moore espouses and encourages. You're getting something like MDMA, but not having a hangover. I think that the therapeutic implications are pretty big. When Shulgin was hypothesizing 2CB's therapeutic potential, he proposed that 2CB might be best taken at the tail end of an MDMA session. It is as if the mental and emotional discoveries of an MDMA experience can be mobilized and something done about them, he wrote in PCAL. Essentially, it's a way of integrating the material that comes up during an MDMA session and bringing participants back into their bodies with that grounding mescaline-like effect of 2CB. 
The combo is now known to psychonauts as the Nexus Flip. But back when Shulgin was writing Pikal, he really thought it could have a future. This combination has several enthusiastic advocates in the psychotherapy world, and should be the basis of careful research when these materials become legal and accepted by the medical community," he wrote. It seems so for healthy individuals, and there have been no deaths linked to its use. But as Nichols pointed out, until there are formal preclinical toxicology studies, I think no one can be sure if it is completely safe. If a lethal dose exists, it's also still unknown. And although some Reddit users report doses of 100 milligrams and sometimes more without physical harm, many recommend staying under 35 milligrams to avoid completely disorienting and possibly frightening psychedelic experiences. But unlike MDMA, which may leave some feeling the famous serotonin dump hangover the next day, 2CB is a bit different. In fact, Vice reports that 2CB works by mimicking serotonin with a low likelihood, if any, of causing long-term damage to the brain. It is important to note there have been deaths linked to other substances in the 2C family, like 2CT7 and 2C-I-NBOME, and one woman suffered a brain injury after ingesting an unknown dose of possibly impure 2CB. What's more, some Reddit users reported experiencing HPPD after high-dose experiences, and two of the 31 survey respondents reported seeing some trails in the weeks following their 2CB trips although they eventually faded. There's also been reports of numerous darknet dealers selling 2CB as MDMA. There isn't any research at this point looking at whether 2CB can be abused. More classic psychedelics such as LSD and psilocybin are considered non-addictive. In fact, they've both shown promise for substance use disorders such as alcoholism and nicotine addiction in clinical trials. But because 2CB is also a stimulant, there may be a potential for abuse that doesn't exist with LSD and psilocybin. As with all psychedelics, it's important to engage in best practices, such as creating the proper set and setting before diving in, especially if you've never done 2CB before and aren't quite sure what to expect. While 2CB in reasonable doses, less than 25 to 30 milligrams, seems physically safe for most healthy people, Folks with heart problems or epilepsy might want to be extra careful with the substance because it can affect heart rate, blood pressure, and the central nervous system. And like all psychedelics, those with certain mental health conditions, like schizophrenia or bipolar disorder, also need to be extra careful because of the increased risk of inducing a psychotic or manic reaction. Certain poly drug mixes can increase risks, and it is not advised to mix MAOI, antidepressants, lithium, or tramadol with 2CB. Cannabis and amphetamines are also known to interact negatively, possibly intensifying the experience and increasing users' anxiety, paranoia, and negative thought loops. If you are set on experimenting with the 2CB and cannabis combination, keep both doses lower than usual and spread out your cannabis intake by at least an hour or more before redosing. Having a sober trip sitter is also a great way to reduce harm and keep you feeling safe and secure, especially on doses over 15 milligrams or for your first time with the novel substance. Not to mention, here at Double Blind, we always encourage readers to prepare their set and setting for a safe psychedelic experience. And the last safe use tip we have for you is to test your substances for purity. I'm really passionate about this one. <laughs> you can do so using a marquee regent test kit. 2CB is the only substance known to turn the regent a bright greenish yellow color, according to the third wave. All in all, this novel psychoactive substance that the Shulgans were so fond of seems to have a lot of potential if used in a safe and intentional manner, but more research is sorely needed.